distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Faculty of Architecture, it is our greatest pleasure to welcome you all to Arc CMU Lecture Series 2020 Day 2 on the topic, New Contemporary Architectural Design and Practices in Asia. My name is Rosalinda Allen, and I'm very honored to be the MC for the opening session. This year's lecture series consists of three days from three international professional architects who will share experiences in their profession to all participants. And today, it is our day three for this lecture series, and it is our great honor to have Miss Mikako Oshima from Japan to give a lecture to you all. Before we start, I would like to briefly talk about her a little. Ms. Mikako Oshima is a first class registered architect in Japan. She is a lead AP BD plus C and well AP. She graduated her Bachelor of Architecture degree from Gobei University and her Master of Architecture degree from Illinois Institute and Technology. During her time working, she's been working with many international companies. For example, in 2001, she worked as an architectural art designer at Kasa Akira Sakamoto Architect and Associates in Osaka, Japan. In 2003, she worked as an architectural designer with a French company in Paris. The name of the company is Feliz from Nuel Architecture and Museography. And after that, she also worked with a company named Eisenman Architects in New York, USA, and also in USA again with Skidmore Owings and Muriel LLP. She is now currently a senior project architect in Nihon Seike, Tokyo, Japan. She's also received many international awards and joined many international activities around the world. Today, she will be sharing her experiences and works on new contemporary architectural design and professional practices. I believe this lecture will improve everyone's working ability and creativity further in the future. So without further ado, I will give this floor to Assistant Professor Dr. Ampika Shumatya to be the moderator for the lecture session. So please welcome. Good evening, everyone. Um, today I will be a uh, speak um, like uh, in <laughs> instructor um, because of as an adult come later, so that why we will relaxing to get uh, to discussion, and I think it's quite great to get the uh, special lecture from international. Now is the third time that uh, we have a special lecture from the new contemporary architectural design and practice in ASEAN. So that is why uh, the last of uh, special lecture guest is uh, Miss Mikako Oshima. So that um, now I would like to welcome you our lecture, special lecture, Mikako Sang. Uh, and everyone, please join me in welcoming her. Welcome. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Bye. Hello. Thank you for your introduction. Thank you for inviting me for this great opportunity to share my knowledge with you guys. I'm happy to talk with you guys eventually in person. Uh, today we are online. Uh, it's great too, but I still love to meet all of you guys someday. So now I would like to show you my screen. 
Please, let me see. I'm not good at this. Hello, can you see my screen now? You guys okay? Yes, yeah, it's okay. All right, it's a uh, Wednesday afternoon, so you just guys relax and just uh, look at, take a look at it. And I will show you a lot of slides because online lectures, sometimes you get bored uh, by looking at the screen. So uh, for that matter, I prepare a lot of slides. So I go quickly um, talk about my project. And before that, these two gentlemen, uh, they already talked last week, uh, Danny from Indonesia and Adrianta from uh, Malaysia. They are all good friends of mine as well. So I'm happy to follow their uh, lectures. Next. So Mr. Adrianta talked about very like philosophical uh, way uh, being an architect. And he talked about uh, Dream Big. So I was thinking about what to talk about you guys. And he talked about very good aspect of architecture. So why don't I talk about a little bit difficult part of architecture? So for me, designing a building is always a big challenge. And today I would like to talk about uh, how uh, Japanese uh, uh, design practice uh, is uh, organized and how you can be an architect. And then uh, using some of my office projects, I would like to show you what's the challenge for architecture. So today I have three topics. Three. And first, uh, I would like to briefly explain the education system in Japan. I heard that uh, your university has an exchange, sort of exchange program with Saga University. So maybe some of you know uh, what the architecture program is uh, in Japan. And then the second, I briefly explain you uh, what is uh, our office is. I work in a big firm. Uh, you may heard about my office name. So I can show you uh, briefly some of my, our office projects. And then the lastly, I would like to talk about uh, uh, how I approach architecture and what's the challenge for architecture. Next. Before uh, starting, I they, uh, uh, they already explained what, uh, how I started working as an architect. But uh, originally I studied in Kobe University uh, in Kobe in Japan, uh, near Osaka, Kyoto. And then after that, I went to university in Chicago. Um, by chance, uh, it's the same university as uh, art studies, but we never met there. So we didn't know each other. We met there, uh, we met each other about five years ago. And then I, from that school, I moved to Paris uh, because I wanted to see some European architecture. So I decided to go to Paris and I studied there a little bit and then I worked there as well. Then after that, it was always my dream to go to New York. So why not to go to New York? That's how I decided to go to New York. That's it, very simple. And then uh, in New York, first I work uh, as a, a Peter Eisenman uh, office as an architect. And after that, I started working at SOM. And then uh, after being abroad for 10 years, I came back to Japan and started working in Japan. And then the, now I'm at the Nihon Seke's office. And the uh, education system in Japan probably is very similar to Thailand, I believe. And around 18 years old, you start going to university and you decided to go what uh, major you're gonna study. Uh, first, you go to four years of uh, undergrad school. And then the, from actually in Japan, from the first year of architecture uh, undergrad school, you choose your major. So I choose uh, architecture. And then the, most of people go to another two years as a master's degree in the undergraduate student. 
as an undergraduate student. But from here, I decided to go to abroad. But uh, most of people go like almost six years study. And every last uh, year of the each uh, school, uh, you look for a job. Also, you have to work on the thesis. Or if you are uh, uh, in the major of design, you do a final project. And then uh, finally, you start uh, practicing architecture. And one thing is that in Japan, most of architecture university, uh, you, architecture, uh, if you want to study architecture, you go to our university. And then uh, our architecture school is under faculty of engineering. So we had to do a lot of engineering part, not just the uh, art part, but also a lot of calculations, uh, structure, uh, calculations, thinking about the environment. So we study whole uh, universe architecture. And then after you graduate the university, as a, as a major of uh, as uh, studying uh, architecture as a major, what would you do? And many people go to architecture firm like me, or some people become a construction manager or work for a big contract uh, car company. We have a lot of construction construction company. Also, some go to uh, developers uh, office. And, and also some of some people work for local authorities or government. And some prefer to work on interior design or we have a lot of uh, house manufacturers. And some people want to study more or become a scholar or uh, become a professor or uh, some people just quit architecture. Maybe it's a better choice. So after four years or six years study, you start practicing uh, architecture uh, in office. Then to be an architect in Japan, you have to take an exam. And this exam is scheduled um, once a year, once a year, very difficult. For 6.5 hours, half day, uh, it goes in five different subjects. And it's a multiple choice. Uh, I think five, uh, uh, you choose one out of five. And then the, you study, uh, you have to pass all these exams. And then if you pass it, uh, you can take another exam, which is a drawing exam uh, uh, scheduled after two, three months later. Also have the drawing, you have the project in one day and drawing uh, looks like this. And then the, eventually you pass it, then you get licensed. And finally you can call yourself as an architect. And then the passing rate in Japan for this architecture exam is very difficult. Okay, yes, some people just take it without studying. So including that, only 10% passes every year. So it's very difficult. Yet, so now congratulations, you are an architect now. So the next, uh, let's uh, see how the architecture of in Japan, uh, if you want to uh, be an architect and work as an architect, uh, there's a couple of choices that uh, you can work for first, like Toyo Itos or Tadao Ando, Sejima, like you name it. Right? You work as a, uh, you work for a small uh, architecture firm or big names like Toyo Ito, and it's called like a studio type or like atelier type in Japan. Or like us, uh, work in a big corporate firm. Uh, this is from uh, actually our office uh, website photo. These are my colleagues. I was talking to him yesterday. <laughs> and then, uh, so you work as a corporate. So actually, you have a lot of corporate office. Like you probably heard uh, about Niken Seke or us or many others. And then the other option is that a lot of construction firm in Japan has uh, also architecture division. And then so they hire architect and so can they can do a design build uh, project. So about us, Nihon Seke, who the hell they are, you know? So our office started in 1967, about 50 years ago, 55 years ago. And currently you are about getting close to a thousand people. And we say that we are multiple disciplinary office. I will explain what this means later. Our office located in Shinjuku. Probably if you travel to Japan, you may visit there. It's 
it's uh, quite a uh, business district. And our office is in this uh, 30, uh, 29 to 31 uh, uh, floor, 31st floor uh, occupied here. And currently, uh, because of this pandemic situation, 50% of people uh, uh, used to be uh, work from home fully, but now the, because number of the patients is diminishing. So we, from September 1st, the uh, company decided to go like 50% or work from home, 50% or you will have to go to the office. Uh, our project is uh, mainly in Japan, mainly, uh, mostly, and but also we work uh, worldwide. Um, I believe we have some project in Thailand too, and but not many. And also a lot in China. Uh, we also trying to have some project in Vietnam, also uh, Indonesia. So multidisciplinary, uh, what that means. In, in the world, I would say that it's quite uh, rare to have all the discipline in one farm. So under the one big group, we have structures, uh, engineering, uh, environmental or MEP engineering, interior design, landscape, street engineers, urban designer, uh, sustainability uh, specialist, renovation, a construction management, a cost estimation, a project management, and nowadays a quite important a budget management consulting, and also we are architect. So if you knock our door, uh, I want to have a building. You can complete a, a project under only one our office. You don't need to hire any other arch, uh, engineers uh, or any other specialist. So if you want to have a project, you can call us. So typically, the, this is our team structure. Uh, usually, we have a division head. I mean, he basically, more I would say that he has just a name, and he overlook all the project. Then we have a one director, and which uh, work closely with us more, and advise the project team. Then usually we have a uh, project management uh, uh, person and also the client relations specialist and architecture or architects and structure engineer, electrical engineers, mechanical planning engineers, uh, civil engineers, landscape architect. Uh, also, and nowadays uh, we are going for also uh, BIM. So we have a BIM management team as well. So uh, depends on the project, it varies. But from like, let's say five to like 20 or even more, if it's bigger project, uh, it's one team. And then you think that, in the, okay, you work in Japan, like, you know, the boss, you have to listen to everything about what boss said. Used to be like that, but from the day one in our office, uh, we say that the, our office is quite flat. So it's quite frank, I have to say in my office, so you can basically talk to everyone in even you are higher or you are you are just uh, out of school it's quite flat um, structure our firm so this is our philosophy uh, in our office so nihon seke started uh, without no master architect like kenzo tange or tadao ando or nothing so like 40 people who wanted to get independent from other firm started our office about 50 years ago. So there's no, of course we have CEOs and everything, but there's no like master architect that we have to like kind of like admire or anything. So my, me, myself is also Nihon Seke, and then my colleague, each one of us is representing Nihon Seke. So this is kind of like new concept uh, back then. Uh, just quickly look at the, some of the projects that we recently finished. Uh, if you came to Japan, the, you might saw this uh, project, uh, Tranoma Hills project. This is near Omotesando, our building. Uh, we also very, uh, work very closely with uh, Nissan or some other companies. We also work a lot uh, school projects and some museums or cultural center 
And if you are big Ghibli fans, you can visit this museum in near, a bit outside of Tokyo. I mean, you have to have a reservation, but it's a, it's a quite good in, uh, museum. That's done by us, actually. Well, most of the drawing came from uh, Studio Ghibli, but uh, we were the architect. As a project, uh, we have a lot of aquarium projects. Uh, we recently finished one in Niigata also. But this one is a bit north of Tokyo. And this aquarium is just called a jellyfish. Quite rare, beautiful, very small. Also, we have a lot of sports facilities and sports stadiums. And then, of course, uh, if you go to go uh, work in China, you have a lot of big projects. It's huge. And as an architect in Japan, of course, uh, we design onsen as well. And I, I'm happy to be there now. And about 10 years ago, when they had the Shanghai Expo, we also worked on the Japan Pavilion for the Expo. It was a competition, we won it. So this is how we work. And now I would like to go through a little bit more detail with how we, uh, we work uh, in each project. Architecture in Japan. If you have been to Japan as an architect or a student as an architecture, uh, you visit every single building that you wanted to see, uh, starting from Kenzo Tange's uh, gymnasiums uh, in Tokyo, of course, very famous chapel uh, from Tadaondo in Osaka, uh, Sendai Mediatek from uh, Toyo Ito. Uh, this is uh, about 10 years ago, the finished um, museum in Na near Naoshima, uh, done by Yue Nishida, uh, one of the Sana guys. Uh, Kishio Kurokawa's museum. Actually, we are also an architect for this. And of course, Tots, I recently did this Tots change, but building is still there. And here's a Domoron uh, Prada, and recently finished. Uh, we were waiting, we waited this year, but it didn't happen this year, the Olympic Stadium in Japan. So, what's the trend in now? Surprisingly, now it's uh, wood, you think wood, it's a big uh, uh, sort of like boom now. Like um, this one from um, uh, Shigeru Ban from uh, Hiroshi Naito, uh, of course, this is Kengo Kuma. We have a lot of like wood building is coming up now. Like why? Because wood is cool now. So how the wood architecture started in Japan? Of course, we have a lot of temples in, in Kyoto, Nara, or all over in Japan. And this is the oldest temple in the world wood, the, with wood structure in Nara. Maybe some of you have visited there. And this main uh, column is uh, still the original one from the uh, 07. That's like 1300 years ago. And then this one uh, in the, the, this Buddha temple in Nala uh, called Todaiji Temple. It's originally built in uh, seven, uh, 758, but uh, because of the some of the fire, uh, it got built. The most recent one is built in 1709. And this is considered as the largest wood structure uh, still now uh, uh, in the world. So 1945, after the World War II, uh, Japan uh, was completely uh, destroyed. So we had to quickly build up the country. This is a photo from 1958, uh, showing the uh, start, start building the Tokyo Tower. I really like this photo because Tokyo has like basically nothing there. And this is suddenly this huge um, gigantic structure is going up. So around the 1950s, uh, after the World War II, we needed to rebuild the entire country basically uh, from scratch. So uh, back then, we needed to produce a lot of wood. This is what it is. Uh, this photo was taken in uh, 2015. Like you can see how the city has developed. And now uh, it's already there's some of the building coming up these areas. It's incredible how the big Tokyo is. So why would now? 
Uh, this is the chart showing the how the number of uh, wood produced uh, in Japan uh, starting from 60s to like uh, current. So you can see that uh, this uh, this two type this natural forest and managed plantation plantation hoas doesn't mean mangroves right you know like in Thailand or Indonesia hoas is like cypress or cedars uh, something that you can use for architecture. And then the, as the construction boom started, uh, they started producing more uh, wood, like so. But at the same time, importing the good quality of wood was much cheaper and good and cheap. So they started also a lot importing a lot of wood. So what happened now? This is come, uh, data from 2010. Uh, now, uh, apparently, uh, there's more supply, so we are producing more uh, wood than we needed. So why don't we start using wood now? So let's look at the function of the, what the forest is doing. Sorry. Okay. Um, so the forest uh, function of forest is not just uh, producing the timbers or structure or, or whatever they use. Oh, but also having a forest protect the, of course, global warming or uh, by keeping the land, uh, reduce natural disaster, or also the all these roots and the trees uh, maintain the water. But you cannot just leave it as it is because that create more disaster. So you have to maintain it uh, every year or every single day, maintain it very well, like your skin, you know? So we need to maintain a, a forest to be very healthy. So why wood for architecture now? Great aspect of wood as an architecture material is good for insulation, for heat, or also for cold in Japan. And the wood can observe some of the humidity, so they can control uh, humidity. Also, they can also uh, it can also observe the ultraviolet or just having the smell of the wood. Like sometimes we use uh, wood in the onsen and you know, which is uh, the smell of the wood uh, gives uh, a lot of relaxation uh, effect. Also having the wood, instead of having a simple ball, uh, like I have now, <laughs> the, the wood also gives a warm impression or like comfortness to the, uh, the human beings. Another aspect is uh, this is the chart, uh, two shots showing how much uh, CO2 uh, emissions uh, by manufacturing the each construction materials. These are basically coming from the wood. So this is less than compared to steel. Look at the steel, you know, the um, emissions, a lot of CO2. And also the, this is a comparison, how much CO2 uh, based on the structures. So there's more CO, uh, CO2 or RC structures or steel structures. So wood, is, uh, wood structure is good for environment as well. So why wood for architecture now? And as a chart that's showing that the, um, this is the total uh, wood demand uh, in, uh, from 2009. So majority of the wood uh, goes to the pulp or chip based like board, particle board and those things. They also used as a timber for uh, many use or like you always see a lot of uh, materials in the construction uh, site, which is a veneered wood. So the total is like this and then this almost this lead area that is about 40% or uh, just for architecture use. So now the government, our government is saying that there's more uh, supply than demand. So you, why don't we use wood? And then the wood industries can you know, consume more wood and they focus on architecture. So why, uh, why not using wood for architecture? So wood is good. Now, uh, I would like to show you some of my projects. I will show you three projects today. One is the Hokkaido uh, Government Assembly Building, which I worked on, uh, completed 2020. 
And another one is a school, high school project uh, recently finished also. And another one is the commercial building uh, near Chiba. And I will uh, show you like big challenges, uh, what kind of challenge we have to think about being an architect. So uh, Hokkaido, I don't know if you ever been to Hokkaido, which is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, uh, area of Japan. It's, it's located in north. In winter, uh, it's not like this much or even more. And it's very cold. Uh, if you like to see the snow, definitely go to Hokkaido. So currently, if, if you if you ever been to Sapporo, this is one of the buildings that you visit as a tourist. And the project is located in behind of this. Basically, it's part of this uh, old uh, government office building. And nature in Hokkaido. Yes, uh, Hokkaido has uh, the big land and beautiful landscape and nature. And also, if you are a big uh, gourmet fan, I have great food, like big clubs or uh, ramen noodles. And of course, the sushi you cannot avoid. And this building is located this old uh, lead brick uh, building. And the, we have another building here. They're going to demonstrate and the building new one. That was our project. And the project is for the local government uh, assembly hall. So when you have a like, political discussion, you go there and, and, and they use this building. And total floor area is about 20,000 square meters and six floor plus uh, one basement floor, which is parking space. And then uh, the last two floors uh, occupied, this assembly hall is occupied in the last two floors. And these are small offices. Okay. And then this is located in the top of all the office. And it's quite unique, or maybe it's kind of a trend in Japan that uh, that uh, show that uh, more like transparent, showing like transparent government or transparent uh, city hall or transparent politics. So they want to kind of like show where the uh, assembly hall is. So this was our uh, how we started the project. And main uh, government. Uh, the assembly hall is all the where all the politicians are will be on the fifth floor, and then the observers you can go and see the what polit uh, politicians talking about. The observer space is in the uh, uh, floor above, but also the the uh, Hokkaido government uh, uh, wanted to have this space as open, so you can go visit there like with uh, when there's no assembly as well. The assembly uh, hall or concept. So this is the Hokkaido uh, prefecture symbol. This is this seven like angles uh, uh, stars. So they have these uh, symbols. And then they also we have this uh, as uh, Hokkaido has this beautiful uh, nature. So somehow we wanted to have this like feeling of being in the wood or going into the woods uh, experience into this project. This is how we started. So starting from the, this symbol of Hokkaido, uh, it's going to like outside. And also Hokkaido has uh, 14 different uh, uh, election districts. So we divided this into 14 different areas. And then, so the symbolic meaning is like, so you discuss something from here and this spread to, to the entire Hokkaido. And also the people's opinion comes back to the, this, uh, where the discussion happens. So this is uh, looking uh, front, uh, towards the front uh, to the assembly hall. And this is uh, looking towards back. So every direction, I wanted to have uh, every direction of the view of the assembly hall. Uh, it's a different uh, views or angles. And that also like means different opinion from the citizens. This is the uh, rendering um, in around, I think, schematic design or uh, design development uh, phase. And this is a photo from the cons uh, completion. And I like this carpet to be green. Usually it's red or like green, uh, the blue, but as a Hokkaido like scenery, 
this uh, green carpet uh, was our ideas. This is from the rendering uh, different angle when we are studying design. Also another rendering views. This is real photos. And this is looking the front part. And this is looking from the side. So you see that every angle that you look up is different. Another thing that I wanted to uh, imply in this project is that this uh, Hokkaido has uh, this beautiful lavender field. So the um, uh, audience seat, uh, the observer seat has uh, this lavender color uh, chairs. And this, uh, all the furniture is uh, manufactured in, uh, in Hokkaido locally assembled. Also, this wood is coming from originally from Hokkaido. So we use uh, local materials uh, uh, and uh, we design it based on it. Then, uh, as I talked about, uh, this is observer areas that you can visit also. This area also, we went back to our original idea of being in the wood. So we, I always wanted to have this like hidden like journey that when you are kids, you always wanted to look for some like hidden secret space that uh, you suddenly find it and you like it. So this uh, originally this program that the government, the local government uh, gave us didn't have this um, space, but as you visit it, you want to go up, you have a like object to go there. So we propose this, uh, this kind of like, we call it the sky gallery, but this uh, sort of like tree house uh, gallery. The left side is the, when uh, we are designing, this is a rendering, this is a real photo, and this is an uh, sort of evening shot. And it's pretty much we designed and I'm quite happy with it. This is rendering. This is like during the, um, the uh, meetings, so you can see the, what they are doing from, uh, inside with this photo, uh, this uh, TVs. And then uh, this is the gallery that I created. This is a photo from the after completion. This is the daytime show and this is the evening show. It's nice. Uh, this is the um, grass facade part, evening shot with snow. So you can see this is uh, the, all this light coming from uh, that corridor. Looking up the ceiling. Now, um, I move on to next project. This is a high school project, a little bit uh, west side of Tokyo in Kanagawa Prefecture. And this school is a um, uh, quite good school, a uh, boys school and private school. And it's a lot of famous people graduate here too. And this is existing. Uh, building photo uh, before we start construction. So they have this main building and art tech building next to it and some gymnasium and track and field. And this uh, is, uh, is, I think, a Catholic um, um, school. So they have like this uh, school chapel as well. This is uh, before demolishing. So they had this story, three stories, very simple uh, structure school, and not much uh, futures. Built in 1964, last Olympic year. But school had no money to build. What can we do? But as I explained, now we have more supplies and demand in wood. So the, now the government or local authority promote using wood uh, widely. So some of the local government or government uh, uh, gives some grants when you rebuild the schools with uh, wood. So school decided to apply this uh, grant. So then uh, that's how we um, were asked to design. So, okay, why don't we start using the wood structure? with a hybrid. 
project outline. So this is what we, I show. This is a site plan, original site plan. And this is uh, what, it, what it, it became as a project. So this is the chapel. And then this is two main building. The one main building connected with bridges and then additional building here. Total floor area is uh, about 9,000 square meters, two story, used to be three story, but we made it two story and with concrete hybrid structure. And partially we also use the steel beam, steel structure, sorry. And then uh, as they had this chapel, this axis was quite important. So we kept it this uh, main uh, axis. And then they also they have this courtyard axis. And actually from there, you can see the Mount Fuji here. So this was very important axis originally. We kept it as it is. So um, two storage buildings. And before that, before this uh, project, originally, as I said, uh, used to be three-story building. But then uh, uh, for some reasons, uh, I will explain you later, we had to build it with two stories. And so what we did was we used this base uh, structure as a concrete structure and then build it up with wood structure. And this also helped to have a shorter egress uh, for the safety reason. When they have earthquake or fire, so kids uh, can escape uh, faster than used to be. Some of the photo I will show you before uh, going to the detail. Uh, from here, actually over there, you can see the Mount Fuji. Uh, inside of the cluster, uh, this is kind of like relaxing room or something like that. So uh, what did we do to achieve the timber frame structure? And I will just uh, talk about uh, from the uh, technical aspect. So in Japan, this is the another challenge. Uh, by uh, using the uh, wood, you also have to think about the fire. That's the one of the biggest challenge. Also, because of that, our fire restriction from the building code is quite strict. So when you always want to use wood, but you always have to have uh, confront this challenge. And while you have a lot of details, but uh, remember that uh, less than 3,000 square meters, every uh, 3,000 square meter, you have to have a fire separation, like basically compartment. Um, when probably in Thailand, you guys have a different um, uh, code, but probably similar code you guys have. So as uh, I said that the, this um, total um, floor area was 9,000 square meters. So how can we use wood? The, uh, as a one building. That was our challenge that uh, we faced. So what we did uh, was uh, using this three meter separation by using concrete. And then every 3000 square meters, uh, we divide. So it, this is still one building, but a uh, fire safety aspect, you can consider as a separate building. That's how we solve the building, uh, project. So the, the reason that we had to do the two story is that the more than three story building, you have to fire fire resistive uh, materials. So the, it's quite, it, it gets difficult to use them wood. Now, uh, last year, uh, government changed this building code a little bit. So now slightly changed. It's getting a little bit uh, less strict because I think the the material um, resistance increased. Also, the government also want to push the wood use. So they kind of like changed a little bit, but still this is the best idea of how the building code. So how I explained that uh, this is the area that uh, we use this uh, fireproof building, unless it's a non-fire building, basically using the wood structure. So those uh, red area is the three uh, division from the, this fire code. So another challenge for this uh, project is that, uh, okay, it's good to use the wood structure, but not compared to steel or a, a concrete structure, it's quite difficult to use a wider spanning. So this was another challenge. 
So for that, how we solved it? Like, remember that uh, how the uh, bridge is uh, built it up. So usually you have these two like pinned uh, uh, structure and then have this hinge they connect it to one bridge. So like we started thinking of the, can we do it? Can we achieve it with the wood structure? So what they did was exactly the same concept as bridge to get the nine meter uh, wider span. So beam itself uh, is about five, four to five meters wide, but connected with the special joint and uh, supported as if like a bridge. This is how this um, is tensioned uh, during the construction. And then also what we did was uh, to emphasize this uh, wood um, uh, strength. We use the um, uh, wood structure around it and then the inside has a steel. So it's kind of like hybrid system as well. And then the, it, it gets more stronger. This is a photo from uh, considering the construction. This shows a lot how we can we uh, have been a hybrid structure system. See, you see that this is a lower part uh, using the, the concrete slab. This is where the this joint beam is a uh, uh, wood, wood uh, joint is uh, created. Yeah, this is the joint detail. And then they bring it to the construction site. Putting it. This is the assembly attachment that connected to the concrete slab and, and then a steel uh, scrum. This is uh, using the displacing. It's almost done. And they also we use this space for the lighting um, uh, setup. This is a bridge connected to the next building, uh, typical classroom. Uh, this is the lower part, which is, has a concrete structure. So you see how, the, how uh, it looks different. See, this is a cold air view, but you see the Mount Fuji, which is beautiful. So the building is very simple, but has a lot of a structure challenge, but we achieved it. So this is gonna be the last project I recently finished. This is, a, if you ever landed in Tokyo, you use either Haneda Airport or Narita Airport. This is very close to Narita Airport completely recently. So this is an um, Australian company. Now it uh, has a lot of uh, warehouse buildings, which is massive. And they have uh, a lot of employees working there, but there's nothing. So they wanted to build this community space for the employees or people uh, who live in the neighborhood. And this business tricks concept uh, they already had was uh, this uh, three uh, triangle is one is a uh, place for live, place to work and place for pain. So this is one of the um, uh, rendering uh, in, uh, during the design. And this is a master plan. So this is this this part. Uh, it's gonna be built in the second phase, so probably supermarket or we don't know what it's gonna be. And they also have a futsal field, so as a like play space, um, fitness gym with a, a small uh, onsen space, and nursery school for kids, and shops and restaurants, and cafes, and they have this also the little uh, playground here. Then this is how it looks like from outside. So biggest challenge of using the timbers or wood outside is uh, because wood is alive. It's uh, coming from nature. Uh, so it has moisture or sometimes bugs or worms or uh, also you have to be uh, UV resistance. And eventually it gets uh, really bad and lasted. 
So using wood in exterior is a big challenge here. So the what the, uh, we did was how can we achieve using wood uh, in the exterior? When we did this rendering, the clients uh, insisted use um, real wood for this. We were thinking about using like aluminum uh, rubbers or something that we can achieve this shape. But uh, as in this is located in this big, uh, man, uh, gigantic warehouse area, they wanted to use this um, natural um, um, image uh, in in these uh, facilities, so client was up for uh, using the wood. So how can we achieve this? So what we did was we find this uh, heated wood. Uh, it's this not this is how the wood comes from nature, and then the approx uh, two hundred or two hundred twenty uh, degrees heat. Basically, you kind of like bake it. So you can see that this is a bit of tan tanned or baked. And by doing this, it gets dry. So it kills moisture and all the insect inside uh, or insect or bugs or worms or whatever it has. So it gets uh, dried and it become like solid material and still using this uh, wood uh, texture. So this is some of the photos uh, running, uh, just right after we finished construction. This We also have a Starbucks here. This is looking at it from the back. You see the connection with the uh, steel frame and rubbers. And as uh, this is uh, attached in the like round shape, so every uh, um, angle you see has a different face, which I quite like it. More photos. This is the separation with the two buildings. We had to uh, detach it structurally, so this was the gap. And this is when the assembly date. So as each piece has a kind of like a curved shape, so it had a different dimension. So contractors numbered every single piece of it, and then they place it as it is. This is the whole, we are checking like if it's not broken or this is in a not a bad shape or not. Me in the pandemic situation with masks and helmet during the construction. And this is night shot. We also worked on like, uh, and this lighting design as well. Uh, we can talk about this maybe another time. More night shot, quite beautiful. So today uh, I talked about design challenges. One was by showing the Hokkaido project, the design concept challenge. And second one was using this high school project was a technical challenge, structure challenge. And then the last one was using it in exterior. So this was a more like environmental challenge. And as an architect, um, we always have this aesthetic challenge as well. So these are all the challenges we had to solve it. So, Designing a building is always a big challenge. This is my topic for today. And will you enjoy it? That's, uh, I would like to uh, you ask you guys. And this was a photo. This is the last uh, slide that I would like to finish. Is um, uh, Denny, the student came to Japan and he visited our office. And that's the photo that we taken uh, from that day. So you guys also come visit us. Thank you. Konnichiwa. <laughs> Hello. Hey, Miyako. Sorry. Hello. I had a meeting with uh, the another meeting. So I like to. Uh, 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 it's really great to have you as our um, guest speaker. Thank you. Uh, uh, then say have the question. <laughs> yes. Yes, please. Any okay. question? Yeah. Thank you uh, for a great presentation and uh, very impressed in your experience because uh, in the part of me, 
uh, Japan is like my second home because I, mm-hmm. I learned at there and uh, learning so much about the detail of uh, but in session of planning. So that why it's quite important that you try to uh, explain and present about the why the architecture design is used to be the um, the uh, understanding about the planning city and until the material right i think uh can you uh how how uh thinking about the the design before create something what what you talking about that before well to me it's uh, i i quite like um like sometimes uh, it comes up to my mind. I mean, I'm not genius or anything, you know, <laughs> but sometimes like from the site or from the project um, uh, function or what client talked about or what I see from that site, like somehow I always come up ideas. Um, I always want to enjoy or some like crazy idea there and also want to have like some fun space there because I'm happy architect, so that's how usually I usually come up with. And today I didn't talk about the colors, uh, color palette that I always enjoy, but somehow that I always want to give a present um, like impression or uh, like um, I would say that uh, like like some like supplies, like sometimes we say that wow effect that I always want to have that. So I always have a chance to explain that to clients and if clients say yes, I'll go for it. And maybe they say no, but I try at least one or two times <laughs> to make my idea in. <laughs> so that's how I work. <laughs> did, did you work with a, a community? or people before design something or then uh, i didn't do much of community like service so much but uh, when you work in the public building like hokkaido building you always have to talk with the local um, like uh, uh, people or each big especially big project uh, you always have to have a discussion with the local people so that time, like uh, we really has to work on uh, work with them. Yeah. I think have uh, we have uh, some participants right, in, inside. Yes. Huh. Please, huh. even Japanese huh. or Thai or. Ah, maybe some Thai can. So everyone if you have any question, you can ask uh, both Ruby and um, uh, live Facebook, Facebook Live, it could be live as well. And also um, in the Zoom, we have uh, some students uh, within the group too. Yeah. So maybe one or two questions could be, could be good. Okay. For message or chatting, it's okay. And I have a, a, another question about uh, you uh, talking about the uh, material especially in wood right it's because it's quite sustainable in, in natural in environment wood environment but uh i don't know about how 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 japanese can prepare about about the wood because uh, you have to get the big uh how to say big forest right to to prepare it. what what they try to do about it I mean, and the, I mean, originally from the old time, we had this industry like since like I, I said like from like seven hundred year seven hundred and all that. So continuously we had this um, uh, field, uh, um, this industry built it up. Also, the government support all this business as well. So uh, from from as a base we had this uh, industry already. So, and then the, as a lot of people uh, uh, started retiring because it's quite a hard job. So now they have a lot of abundant and uh, the forest. So the local uh, prefectures or government is trying to protect that. And then, the, but still they, like if you make a vegetable, you probably 
like, yeah, I don't know, like planted tomato or something. If you put so many like flowers, uh, you have to pick some of the, it to get the good tomatoes. The similar like process, you have to have it for the wood or to make a timber or good timber. Mm -hmm. So, so, so for that, and then nowadays we use more concrete or steel, so not so many people use um, the wood. So that's why now the, the we are promoting more using wood now. <laughs> yeah, and, and maybe last question about the, I know about the, uh, the women who work in Aztec, it's quite hard, right? <laughs> Especially in Japan, how you, make, <laughs> how you make survival with architecture, architect uh, team until in ASEAN, right? You are the one member of uh, what, Akasia, what, right? What do you think about that and how do you think that in the future, what's a woman in the role of like Oh, it's it's a good question and I'm happy to answer this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For example, in my office, uh, we have probably like in architecture division, I would say probably thirty percent of uh, the employees are women, and they're very good as well. And if we go to construction site, for example, like last project, I was uh, looking at the uh, other construction administration as well. And you are like sitting in like 20 to 30 people's room and you're going to be the only one, only one female architect sitting there. But of course, like, OK, this little lady talking something and sometimes they don't listen to us. But like I go like this, you know, like, OK, guys, like now we have to do this and everybody follows it. And probably like as my generation, I'm like getting older, but still in the construction field, I was considered as a little younger one. And then no one listened to like someone my age if you are the guy. But as maybe because I, I am female architect, they sometimes listen to us. And also the, the when I graduated university, one of my professor told me about this story that because I think he had this experience. He was uh, he it was he, so was a male architect. And he said, if you do the same thing, the women and then the uh, men, and then the easy you do, you do the same thing. Like somehow that the girls do it, this looks better. We don't know why, but <laughs> so he said, okay, sometimes okay, it's a negative thing. We are like more minority. Like as me as uh, working in New York City, like as an Asian woman, was uh, like. And, uh, you know, the minority of minority. So it was quite tough, but if you make up an uh, effort and you step up a little bit, and then uh, you keep, can keep going up, you know. So don't be shy and speak up, of course, and sometimes you hide against the uh, guys, but uh, if you are uh, positive, in the end, it's a uh, architecture is like heart by heart. So if you show your effort and then, then what you want to pursue, and if you keep pursuing, you get it. So be confident and be happy to be a female architect. And I want to have more colleagues with female architects. Yeah, it's quite great to uh, many um, answer. Right? It's quite nice, and I think it's good experience that that people can see your work hard and. It's quite good for for work for architecture lady in architect, right? And today I think uh, it's enough time to <laughs> to discussion. And now I I think in in Japan around eight p.m. right. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that will be should be should be okay for today. And um, I think on behalf of the 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 organizing team. I'm really uh, great to have you for the last person in this program. The first My one, pleasure. Danny, <laughs> and then the second one is um, Adrienta, and you're the last one, Mikako, which, which I think is quite um, good for the whole uh, series, and to have like you to be the last one to uh, close the session, and also uh, because you three are all my friends, very uh, good friends, and we know like. Yeah, quite some time since since Hong Kong. 2017, oh. maybe 18, 17. Yeah, yeah. Quite some time. Four, yeah. Five. Right. Yes. 
I, I was very happy to be in Chennai last time, so I'm happy to visit again. <laughs> yeah, maybe next time, next time. in Chiang Mai. <laughs> in Chiang Mai. Yeah. Oh, there's uh, one question from from Rita. You want to answer this question? My friend, hi Mika. Do you Mika? Chat. Yeah. He he asked about the um, woodwork. How you convince the clients? Uh, to come down from three story to two stories uh, to the school. It's, it's both reasons. Like as a, if you go to three story, you have to have a more bigger foundations and more structures, and so it was easier to to convince. Like if you go down, if naturally the price of the construction cost uh, goes lower, and but if you have a uh, enough um, GFA, the client was okay with it. Tipa is better, <laughs> always for the client. <laughs> that should be it. Um, thank you very much, Mikako. Thank you. I, if everything is okay, we can, yeah. I can go like, visit you in, in Tokyo. Yeah. Yes, definitely. You always go to Osaka, I know that. <laughs> we will come here um, in again. Yeah. Because, yes, uh, I would happy to be. You visited me uh, last uh, December. Before the COVID. Mm, yes. Okay, let, yeah. let's, let's snap the photo together. Oh, yes. Okay, okay, let's see. Can you slide? Okay, now my stuff is snap. Okay. One, two, three. Snap. All right, okay. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> Ciao. If you have any other question, please email me. I'm okay. happy to answer. Bye. 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 Bye